Today, we've got something interesting for you. No name, no picture, no confirmation on what it's gonna be. But yeah, it's out there now. Uh, officially passed through wireless certification. Oh, sorry, forgot to mention, we're talking about Nikon. They just registered a new camera under the model code N2410. This kind of thing usually happens when Nikon's getting close to showing us something. Now, what's actually surprising is that this camera supports dual band Wi-Fi, including five gigahertz. That's not something they usually put on entry level bodies like the Z30. So yeah, it makes us think this might be something serious and that's exactly what this video is about. Let's dive in. So naturally, we're all asking the same thing. What is this camera? Let's look at it logically. Nikon just dropped the Z63. Solid hybrid camera, big video upgrades, a proper refresh. Then we got the Z52. That one came in quietly but brought decent upgrades for the price. Now here's where it gets more curious. The model number, this one's N2410, doesn't match anything we've seen before. But if we look at the last few releases, things start lining up. The ZF was N2137, Z63 was N2214. Then came the Z52, that was N2326, and now N2410. So yeah, definitely newer than all of them. That gives us a few strong possibilities. First up, the Z73. It's been almost five years since the Z72. That's a long gap especially when tech keeps evolving fast. Most camera brands refresh their enthusiasts or pro lines every three to four years. So yeah, this could be Z73 lining up. But there's another idea we can't ignore, Z92. A bit more unexpected, but not crazy. The Z9 came out in late 2021. It's still powerful. It got stacked sensor, 8K video, internal raw, all the good stuff. But even with flagships, a three to four year refresh is normal. So we wouldn't be shocked if Nikon's working on a follow-up. Now here's another twist. What if this is something completely new? Hear us out. Both the Z7 and Z9 deliver impressive video, but their bodies are made more for still shooters. This one with dual band Wi-Fi and five gigahertz support kind of leans toward creators, makes you think of a cine focused mirrorless body Maybe Nikon's way of jumping deeper into that space, especially with competition heating up. So what do you think? For us, the safest guess feels like Z73, but Z92, still on the table. And yeah, a brand new line could be Nikon's wildcard. Let's talk about how these could shape up based on what we heard and what we'd expect next. If, this camera turns out to be the Z73, then you already know what Nikon's aiming for. Resolution, image quality, and that clean, detailed look pro photographers love. The Z72 gave us a 45.7 megapixel sensor, dual processors, and decent 4K60 video. But that was back in 2020. If Nikon's cooking up the Z73, we'd expect a next-gen sensor, maybe stacked or BSI, for faster readout, better low light, and less rolling shutter. Basically sharper images, but with speed to back it up. Autofocus? That's one thing we hope Nikon upgrades. The Z63 took a huge leap there with subject detection and better tracking. So imagine all of that tuned for high res stills. Birds, animals, vehicles, you name it. That would finally bring the Z7 line up to speed with Sony and Canon. And for video, yeah, it's not a cinema cam, but it could be more than just decent. Internal 6KN RAW 4K120, waveforms, if they carry that over from the Z63, the Z73 might surprise a few people in the hybrid space. Design-wise, we think it'll look a lot like the Z63, hopefully with a better grip, better EVF, and a fully articulating screen. That tilting one on the older Z7 yeah, not great for vlogging or vertical content. If Nikon can upgrade the speed, 
autofocus and usability, while keeping that top-tier image quality, the Z7 III could be the sweet spot for a lot of you who shoot stills first, but want a bit of video capabilities too. Now, if this is the Z9 II we're looking at, then yeah, we're stepping into flagship territory. Z9 was a bold move from Nikon. No mechanical shutter, stack sensor, 8K RAW, 120 FPS bursts, and somehow priced lower than the Sony and Canon rivals. So how do you level up from that? We're guessing Nikon goes harder on resolution. There's been buzz about a 52 megapixel sensor, which could give more detail without compromising speed and better low light or dynamic range. That would be a win for sports and studio shooters both. Video is where it gets interesting. The first Z9 had internal 8K and RAW, but now we might see 8K60, better heat control, and even more Pro Tools. Think improved codecs, maybe ProRes RAW HQ and, and smarter focus assists. No record limit, just smoother and more polished handling. Speaking of autofocus, Nikon's AI subject tracking has improved big time since the Z9 launched. So expect it to be even more responsive now, especially with fast moving or unpredictable subjects. If they could make the body a bit lighter or more compact without losing that pro level build, that'd be a welcome change for a lot of you who shoot on the move. Then again, what if we're completely off? What if this leaked code belongs to a new category we haven't seen yet from Nikon? Let's say something that sits between the Z8 and Z6 III, a camera that leans more toward video, kind of like Sony's FX3 or Canon's R5C. Nikon doesn't have a dedicated video-first hybrid yet. Yes, the Z8 and Z9 shoot incredible video, but they're still shaped for photographers. If Nikon wants to get serious in that hybrid cinema space, a compact body with full-size ports, great codecs, good heat performance, and active cooling could be their move, especially with the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That's a feature that appeals to filmmakers who use external monitoring, wireless workflows, or cloud-based transfer. There's another small detail that's easy to overlook. The registration was done through a Chinese wireless agency, which raised some eyebrows. Most of Nikon's current mirrorless bodies are made in Thailand. So registering it in China could mean a few different things. It might be that Nikon's expanding production lines, or maybe this camera's being built for a specific market first, something more focused on Asia, or maybe even a test release for a new concept. It's all speculation, but you never know. A brand new product line would shake things up and maybe bring Nikon some attention in the YouTube and indie cinema world. Now, based on past launches, Nikon usually announces something within two to three months of a camera showing up in wireless databases. So if N2410 just got certified, we might see something around August or September 2025. That lines up with Nikon's usual schedule. The Z6 III was announced in the summer, the ZF in the fall. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched to imagine a teaser coming in a couple months. We're not saying it's coming soon. Soon, but the window is there. This isn't just a test unit. Registration means the internal build is mostly done. So that's where we're at. New cameras registered, so there will be something for sure. And now we wait. So yeah, that dual band Wi-Fi tells us this won't be an entry level camera. It's more likely a better camera built for people who want pro level performance. Now it's just a matter of when. We'll see. Till then, we'll keep a close eye on every leak, every rumor, and every little sign Nikon drops. Let us know what you think. What features would you love to see? Drop your guesses in the comments. We'll be reading. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe for more camera news and reviews.